Hello, this is Brennan Schumacher, and welcome to another episode of today's image. And in today's image, we'll be looking at this uh, digital uh, illustration that I'm working on of a girl who is somewhat blue or purple, somewhere in that in that area. As a matter of fact, let me pull out the color picker and have a look. We're in very close to purple, but uh, a little bit higher than blue kind of range there. And uh, so the thing I want to cover with this, uh, some ideas to go over with this, just, just some things I'm thinking about while I'm working on this, which I thought would be interesting to share, is how the light, uh, the color of the girl and the color of the things that I'm painting around her, such as these flowers, I want them to be much more lighter than, let me see if I'm painting here, yeah. I want them to be much more lighter than the environment. And it's very important that I made the surrounding environment dark in order for these colors to show up. Now a reason for that is because if we take, if we look in a black room, and let's imagine that first of all, maybe we're in a regular room, it's very bright, so it wouldn't be perfectly white, that never happens, but maybe it has a, a light grayish kind of color to it and I have no idea why that's painting like that. Oh, I have the wrong tool on. Sorry. Okay. So let's just fill this up with uh, a light grayish color. This is probably about how how much light a, a indoor room would have or something like that. And so we take that and then we imagine there's an object in the room like I don't know, a red ball. And so a few things are usually very very red, but maybe it'd be this kind of red. Uh, so it wouldn't be a highly saturated red like this one, right? You rarely see a ball or anything around you that is this highly saturated uh, with that much color. Normally it looks like this. However, when I paint this, when I paint this one here, the very strong one, look at how this one suddenly seems very dull. So you see your eyes are constantly adjusting to the light. Now with that in mind, what would happen if the room that we're in was pitch black. What you should see is nothing. So if you did see something in the room, such as a red ball with highly saturated light like this, what would you think? Well, this is obviously radiating light. And with that type of uh, the, the, the light that is being emitted from it, you would have to assume that it is in fact a light source. And why is that? Because it is a color which is, well, first of all, highly saturated that you never see. And why would you be able to see it in a pitch black room like that when it's not white? Because normally if you look at the sun or a flashlight, you always see it's mostly white. You never see a strong laser beam like color coming out of a light. And if it is a, light, a laser beam, then it's very concentrated. So in order to understand how that neon effect works, we have to understand uh, what happens with the eye with color and how color works against uh, darkness and lightness. So what I did for that is I made this little thing here before I started making this painting. And you can see how the inner ring of this part here has the pure red and then it slowly fades. Let me get rid of this part here temporarily. And it slowly fades off into the dark and it also uh, fades inward to the light. So this inward white area represents the lightest light you could have, and this is the out the outside area is just a well a pitch black room that we might be in, and so the light is on the inside, but as the light tapers off, you start to see the color that it's emitting, and this effect can happen with if you're looking at a lighter or a fire, the strongest intensity of the light, the part that's making the light, is usually a very whitish color. Uh, that is, if you can even look at it. The sun, for example, you can't even look at it. It's so strong. But light is usually emitting white. So when we're painting, we're always going to be reusing a whitish kind of color. Now, a lot of people argue if you're outside, it's actually yellow. It's it's a very light kind of yellow, like up here it, it, in this area of the scale. So you'd be painting using this type of color to make light. And then there's all these things about complementary colors and stuff like that. But just to understand the basics of how to get this neon type of glow, first we need to understand this. I started off with white and I uh, slowly gradually worked out to the color and then gradually worked out to the black. Or you could say I just made a ring of red 
and on the inside I faded towards the light and on the outside towards that. So you get this type of glow. And if you look at it for a distance, and if you compare this to a lightsaber in Star Wars or wherever you are, you know, if you're looking at a, a picture of a, a lamp or something, this is usually what happens. It's usually lighter on the inside, and the color of the lightsaber or the color of the fire, whatever it is, will be more towards the outside because the, the intensity of the heat is on the inside. So with that in mind, we want to understand what color or what value exactly is that color. So let's take this and just desaturate the colors very quickly and notice what happens. And basically what we should have here is we have a gray. It changes here. I want to make this brush bigger. We have a gray that is slowly fading in towards a light. So th this isn't, it wasn't drawn out perfectly, but it's black on the outside and it goes into a gray and then slowly, gradually just leaves the white space in the middle where the heat is coming from. So with that being true, we could assume that this area right here, get back to a normal color brush, this area, this ring, the, the grayish area that's just between the perfect light and the perfect dark, that is where our color is found. And that's true. That's where the spectrum of color is. So if we go back here, uh, get a fully saturated blue, a fully saturated green. I'm just choosing random colors here. You could choose any one. But well, a really interesting one to compare is this light blue. And look at how that light blue seems to be lighter than the dark blue. But if we use the software and desaturate the colors and turn it, turn this into a black and white image, notice that right there. Isn't that amazing? They all have the same exact color. They're just gray. So all colors fully saturated turn into gray. And what would happen if we use a different value of those colors? For example, I'm going to use a whiter version of, well, the blue or the purple. Let me just go with red. So that actually becomes pink. The lighter version of the blue is like a sky blue, or that's actually even sky, I don't know, purple or something. And these are all on a higher value range. And to compare, let me go back a few steps and forward one step. <laughs> okay, so this blue, let's move it up to a, a higher, lighter type of blue. And I'll put that here. And uh, well, we'll do the same with the green. So here's a, a lighter green and a lighter red. Whoops. Let me backtrack a bit. Sorry about that. The red, we'll bring it up. We'll just bring it up like halfway on all of them. That way to make this easier for me. Blue, go up halfway. Must be a faster way of doing this. And with finally with the orange, I'll paint that in. Now let's see what happens when we desaturate. And you can probably guess that's right, all of the lighter versions, such as this one here. Let me get a, a marker out. This one here is clearly a lighter shade of gray than this one. All of these up here, this whole row is a lighter shade of gray. Just like back here, you can, you can see it. But now if you ask your average person, what's the difference between this color and this one, that one and that one, that one and that one, your eye doesn't really understand it. But what it is when you scientifically start to study color and what we're calling this nowadays, I believe is color theory. Uh, that's what, probably what they've been calling it for a while. But as I'm learning it, uh, the difference between these colors is that they basically have more white to them. And it, you can consider it to be a completely different hue, but actually it just means it has more white. It doesn't necessarily mean it has more light. Some colors just are lighter because they have white in them, but it can also have something to do with the light. And that is where color gets really confusing and it's very subtle difference. Is the color itself actually lighter? Is it just a lighter shade or does it have more light shining on it? Because if you shine a bright light, as we can see here, if you shine a bright light onto uh, the pure solid red, it just starts to become a lighter shade. It becomes this pinkish color, right? And as you go off to the dark, Likewise, it just seems to be darker, and it seems to be a completely different color. It might even look a little brown, but it's not. <laughs> it's red. So this is where we really start to separate our values from uh, the color saturation and, of course, the actual color that we're using itself, which would be called the hue. You have your hue, 
your color, uh, the hue, the uh, saturation, and uh, and then of course the uh, the light, which we call values. Okay, so or light, I mean values can be interpreted differently, but yeah, that's what happens. So with that in mind, did I make the background? I want this girl to look like she's kind of glowing. Did I make the background dark enough? And I have this black and white version, which proves to me, yes, it, I mean, she's standing out. She Even from a distance, she seems much lighter than the background. So that could mean she either has a strong light shining upon her uh, from what uh, multiple directions, perhaps, or it could mean that, you know, she's actually glowing. Uh, there's no way to really prove that unless I had, um, if I really wanted to look like she was on fire or something, I would need the uh, insides of her. Uh, <laughs> literally, like, she would need to be glowing from the inside. Uh, but the way I have it now, there's light shining on her side, and over here we have shade. So she still looks solid, not like a, uh, you know, a glowing jelly ball or something like this. Um, and so, I mean, those are different things you can do to uh, to get a glowing effect, is to make sure that the background is dark. Because if you're in a light room, you're never going to see something glowing. How can it glow if it's in the light already, right? So to get that neon type of effect, make sure that you have a dark background and that the objects which you want to be glowing are nice and bright. So one last thing I'll do for this. So I'll copy and paste this layer, which has the girl. And I'm going to bring her with the uh, color, I'm going to use the hue saturation tool, I'm going to bring her lightness up a little bit. I might bring the saturation of her color down a little because I thought it was too strong. And then I'm going to use the uh, brightness contrast tool to make sure that I still maintain some of those shadows which I need. Although that's a little bit too strong. Just using my eye to get you know to my level of preference with it. And that's that. Now let's compare that one. I'll make another uh, layer from visible and desaturate it. And we'll compare. This was the original black and white version. Zoom in a little. This is the original uh, black and white from the original color. And this is the one I just made, where you can see she's clearly uh, shining a lot brighter now. Her and you know all of the, all of the objects that were on that layer with her. So that's it for today, and I might even choose to go back to the original one. But I just want to review that really quickly. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, learning about how to make a glowing, how to understand the glowing neon effects and uh, what it means in color. Another thing, oh, just before I go, I thought it looked really cool. I wanted to share that was uh, to make this whole layer black, and now look at how she really, really glows because the darker the background, and that's the note I'm going to leave you with, the darker the surrounding environment is, the stronger the colors will seem to glow against that environment. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, please remember to subscribe if you like, and uh, we've got a ton of new stuff, content coming out, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.